Thank you so much uh, for having me here today um, in this beautiful space to read alongside poets whose work I admire so much um, and to be able to listen to this incredible piece of music inspired by one of my poems. I think that's the coolest thing anyone's ever done for me. Thank you. Um, so this first poem is uh, it's called Happiness and it's the poem that won the competition this year. It's written in a really playful form called A Gram of Ands, which was invented by Terence Hayes. Um, and it's a lovely form because each of the words of the poem's 11 line endings is a partial anagram of the poem's title. It's called Happiness. It's in the damp whirl of biscuit-scented hair on the nape of a newborn, or in the mint of Sunday new potatoes which shine under their lick of butter. It's watching for the phases of the moon, the intentional way it swells and arcs, shrinks and spins. It is your breath's humidity in this bed of ours, a solid ship that rocks us in the night, or in the winking silk of a spider's web against the misted pane. It's in coffee, sweetened with its glob of honey, drunk outdoors in smoking sips from the thermos lid, or in the haze that rises from the compost heap on winter evenings. It's in our sense that whatever happens now is who we might become. This walk together in the woods, these plump shapes of dripping malachite moss, that fiddlehead of the fern's curled spine. Thank you. When I was pulling together these few poems to read to you today and kind of rehearsing them this week, I realised that so many of my poems uh, are walk poems. I think I do my best thinking when I'm putting one foot in front of the other. Um, and this poem's called Tidal Race. Um, it's set in Orkney where we spent some time walking this summer. Um, and we, we walked up to this amazing place called Bursay Rock, climbed the hill and peered over the cliff edge at the puffins and the gannets, diving into the, um, the meeting between two currents, which is the tidal race produces kind of choppy, turbulent, sometimes dangerous water where gannets love to feed. Tidal race. I want to climb with you again, to pick our path along that ridge where we sunk our bodies down in turf and pink tip grasses fringed your face, where the sea said, wished, the oyster catcher, weep, and a gull skimmed its curve unmindfully, a shade beyond your skull. But this morning, found you capsized and sinking in the campsite kitchen, bloodless, clammy, haunted by the world and all its doubles. They hauled you off in their blue light bus, and I rode beside, squeezed your shoulder tight, and willed you back to yesterday. Drowning here, the reflected twin of everything swims in your eyes and pulls you far from reach. They wheel you out and in from scan to scan, pump dye around your veins and brain to find the chink that let the shadows seep inside. Hours slide behind this green curtain and still you get your sums wrong. Still believe in clones of fingers, faces, clocks that press at the corners of your eyes, maintaining they exist, insisting on their right to be here. I want to take you home now. Come back, we'll grip the cliff edge while the seal's sleek head lifts above the water's surface melts into gloss again. Gannets will plunge, gold-hooded into the tidal race and plash 
to scoop out cloud mark mackerel flaring silver in the sun. So this next poem I'll share with you um, was written in memory of my wonderful stepfather Ray, um, who lived in the same village for 84 years uh, in Hampshire and loved walking the lanes and the hangars around where we lived. Um, in his younger days he'd go metal detectoring in those lanes um, and he had this lovely old wax jacket that would hang in the cupboard um, on the way, or, you know, next to the front door um, and I used to love rummaging in the pockets of that jacket. Uh, for all the little treasures that he'd found on his walks. It's called Held. You used to tuck away the things you found. You'd pocket scraps of treasure, got on strolls, up hangers, down the hollow ways. Some days you'd light upon a blade of sharpened flint, napped by knowing hands or the small astonishment of a jay's blue-barred feather. Once, you dug a silver sixpence from the soil, and best of all, a signet ring in old and glowing gold. Now, the shape of all this missing you cries to be cradled in the curve of my palm like a blown egg, an ellipse of frail shell the still and silent air. Here, I want to say, is something good I've gleaned. Take it, please. Hold on to it for me. Uh, this next poem is about a different sort of ending, um, but an ending that kind of fell into our laps like a blessing after months, probably years, of struggling, um, and it's called Devil Day. Our ending happened as a gift. That day, the change blew through us. A shudder flood of starlings flung away like iron filings while we gripped the path, jackets billowing, hair full sail. Even the features of your face, grim set against the wind, threatened to unmoor. We flattened our feet upon the track as thorns thrashed into new shapes against a damaged sky and the coconut scent of warm gorse faded on the air. At the peak, great lumps of basalt, torn from the hills some other devil day, lay hurled about. The wind whirled in the coves of our ears to make them into echo chambers, casting our voices off elsewhere, sending thought to unspoken places. All at once, each flailing thing was stilled. We faced each other, not a word we knew. As you scrambled separate down the scree, the heather foamed on fire beneath my feet. Um, and this last poem I'm going to share with you, it's, uh, it's gone back to that form that I shared with you at the beginning, the grammar vans, um, which is so playful with, with anagrams at the line endings. And I wrote it this summer, um, first day of summer when I had no classes to teach, no responsibilities. I went for a walk in the new forest. And you know how forests can sometimes feel like cathedrals? It felt like that that day. It felt like everything was kind of fizzing in worship somehow. It was amazing. Um, there are a couple of ecclesiastical terms I've used in this poem, which I think it would be nice for you to know. Um, and the first is orans handed, which is this posture of prayer or praise. Um, and the second is aspergillum, which is one of those swishy brushes that they use to, to sprinkle holy water. Effervescence. This forest is alive with things that fizz in hushed devotion. I'm free today to hear the bees hum hymns, 
drunk on puffs of pollen, sensor swung from meadow sweet and Queen Anne's lace. Ferns stir themselves to nod and bow and sail a summer breeze. I see them, orans handed to the sun, each pair of leaves a single prayer in a reef of fractal patterned green. Damselflies flash and dart in a fever of electric grace. In the shade, a knock-kneed foal gazes, still as any seer. Her flanks a polished silver, her tail a swishing aspergillum. Never to me has the beech leaves' shimmering tracery sounded so serene a song to everything that flickers foams and gleams. Even my blood's bright glow behind closed eyes is ardent to be seen.